Hello again, lovely people. I have begun wiring the new remote, as you can see here. And I just wanted to make a somewhat quick video just to say, oh boy. I mean, there's a lot going on here, guys. This probably has to be the most intricate wiring project I've embarked on. I have my concerns that when I go to assemble all this and close that case up, it's going to be tight. I hope not, but I fear it may be. We do have this extra room in these two divots that I ended up putting in the model, which help a great deal and hopefully will take up most of the wiring and allow the wiring to collect in these two handles. Hopefully that will solve the problem and it'll fit together nicely. Anyway, that being said, a couple of things to note. One is I am definitely going to do an Instructables type page on Nova's website for assembling and wiring this because so far there are two topics that definitely need to be addressed and pun intended, which you'll get in a second. First being the NRF. Uh, they do use an address, believe it or not, because they're on the 2.4 gigahertz network. Uh, interestingly enough, they can interfere with your home wireless network and or even microwaves, believe it or not. So my struggle with this guy turns out to be that one of the problems was I was playing around with a couple of new wireless access points and yes one of them was interfering with it so they give you I think 124 channels to choose from and apparently the lower band is pretty much used up so I just put it at 124 both of them and they work great however that being said this is going to be something that you guys are all gonna have to watch out for in your own specific cases because you may need to adjust those addresses in the code so again in my uh, instruction web uh, page that I'll build for this uh, I'll explain all that in detail and second problem is the OLEDs so I had these guys both working all awesome but I went ahead and bought a handful of new OLEDs and I used one of those here in the new circuit and guess what they were both displaying the same exact thing because that one is on the same exact address as that one. So address again, in your specific case, you may have to do what I had to do, which is on the back of these guys, there's a jumper. Actually, it's a little more tricky than a jumper. There's a tiny, tiny resistor. You actually have to move to a different um, pad to create a different address. So I had to do that with that one and then adjust the code accordingly. So those two things you may have to adjust as you're assembling this depending on your circumstance and your hardware. All right, that all being said, as I love to say, I have this guy powered up. So power goes into the battery and then goes into the five volt regulator, which you can see right there. And I'll do close-ups of all this in a second. And then from there into the three volt regulator and into the mega. Okay, and then the Mega is obviously powering the two OLEDs, and those guys are running. That's the only thing I have connected right now, just because I wanted to test those. Uh, and then the three volt regulator goes to the NRF module, which is down there in the handle. Then it has a JST connector, which will connect to the Mega right here. This JST connector is for these two, let's call them fire buttons, or jump buttons, if you will and then the power connector so there's three gst connectors from the back to the front the only one that i'm iffy on is the power switch so right now i just have it wired and it's not the power switch the other one's up there i'm debating if i'm just going to hard hardwire that i think it depends on how much room i have in here for enough cable to be able to open this clamshell kind of way if not, then that'll be a fourth JST, which kind of bums me out, but there's nothing else we could do here, guys. I, no matter what component I decided to move to this front side, if I even had room, which I kind of do here for the regulators at least, I would have ended up having to create a JST either direction. So it is what it is. Let's just hope it all goes together as it does. If not, the worst case scenario is yes, I'm going to have to thicken these guys up, widen them up, I should say so that there's more space in between, which will kind of suck, but I think the grip will still work fine, and I probably won't need more than five, maybe at most 10 millimeters, so. Okay, so yeah, um, let's talk about the front first. So I'm gonna pick up the camera. Hopefully we won't get too dizzy whizzy on my camera work here. Um, so yes, I think I am going to put just a dab of hot glue on my 
three displays, the RGBs and the two OLEDs display, o displays, just to hold them together. If you remember in a previous video, I talked, talked about we could probably put a piece of foam there before we go ahead and put this holding plate on top of them, just to keep them snug, because that plate really doesn't press on the OLEDs especially, for obvious reasons. So I was thinking foam, but now I think I'm just gonna pop them in place and just put a dab of glue in each corner. Uh, hot glue comes off pretty easy. Honestly, super glue even snaps off pretty easy. But here's the catch, guys. Um, I think once this thing is together, because there's gonna be so many hardwired, soldered connections, if one of your displays or the RGB or these pots go bad, I think you're pretty much going to be screwed. You'll have to disassemble the whole thing to get this plate out. So as you can see, all these wires sticking up off the Mega here that are not connected. These are what I had connected to the pots and the RGB because I did have the plate in place and all wired up just to test those few components. But there was no way I was getting it out without desoldering them. So it will be a nightmare if you have to replace one of those components in the face, but such is life. Uh, this is a DIY project. We're not spending hours and hours and hundreds of thousands of dollars on R&D to do it exactly right. And yeah, hand wiring is a lot more difficult than uh, robot wiring or somebody who sits there and does it all day long. So anyway, I'm, I digress. Uh, the only wires that I'm missing are three wires per joystick. Actually, two wires because... As I've said, I'm not going to use the push buttons on these guys because I think they're highly unreliable. Um, so I'm just going to put two more wires on each of those and that'll be it. Even though, yeah, there's a whole lot, so that'll be it is an understatement. I haven't counted how many connections we'll have, but uh, I did my best to not daisy chain too many grounds and, and 5 volt lines because that's not always good, especially for ground lines. But in this case, we don't have much choice, guys. So for some of the controls, you can see the ground here is daisy chained from pot to pot to joystick. Same on this side. And then resistors are in line, which you can see here in one case for all the buttons. Um, same thing on the rear. You can't see it, but there's a resistor shrunk wrapped in there. Same thing on that side. And then those two wide together and connect. So those two share ground and power, but we'll get away with a couple of buttons here and there just doing that. Um, what else? So yeah, these connections I'm making all direct, no pins, because we really don't have the room. But it's pretty easy to do. I explained it in my previous video. And then we have that small chip of PCB there that I'm going to use for a ground and 5 volt plane, I guess you could call it, or block. Hey, making good use of the PS2 cover for Nova, huh? Because that's on its way out. Oops. Um, so while I have you here, shout out and thanks to Jordan again. I have gone ahead and reprinted my top with the new position of these two PS2, uh, sorry, PIR sensors. And the PS2 hood is gonzo. No more backpack on Nova. And then secondly, I went ahead and re rewired my back using the two-piece back. Again, hats off to Jordan. Big hats off to him for this one. This was his design. Working with a few of the guys and girls on Discord. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. So now if I need to get in there and change any controls or anything, you don't have to remove the whole hood. It's two screws that'll hold it on the plate, which you can see there. And I can even pop that up since it's not screwed on, so you can see completely so yeah it's now two pieces awesome and there are the reset button the green button then we have the volume control the RGB dimmer and then I went I chose to go with a shallow button so my button isn't out you have to use a pick tool to reset the OLED in my case but he did design it so that you can use a button that protrudes through that hole your choice so yeah that came out awesome thanks again Jordan getting all tangled up here with my mega um i think that's it guys yeah i just wanted to give you an update on the uh, wiring process i uh, could because now at this point i am ready to yes put my plate and mega in place and finish up all this wiring everything's been tested um i guess i should test the nrf one more time now that it's in place and wired up before i go ahead and do that but after that we'll be good to go so 
a few more days hopefully ladies and gentlemen and we will have the remote complete um code is underway and once this is together and finished then i'll really be able to get in there and finish it up so for those of you who already got their parts and or are printing this already i will release the schematic this weekend most definitely because i'm i'm 99 confident with this setup right now and by that time i may even have her all together so yeah so one more look and then i will let you all go and i will be back with another update when it's all put together and um yeah Stay well, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon, guys. Thanks for watching.